Okay, so we are recording. And then here is our audience. We got everybody. Hi. Hello. Okay. So my presentation is over Paul R. Ehrlich and um, some of the key points that I'll be highlighting with him is how he changed from a scientist to an activist. Um, he changed his paradigm from discussing that there were issues of population to there were issues more so for the environment of consumption. Um, and one thing that I wanted to include was a quote from him. He did talk about it turns out the population issue is easier to deal with than the consumption issue. Um, so that was the major change over the course of his career was focusing on consumption as opposed to population. He was born in Philadelphia and moved to New Jersey when he was in high school. And it was at this point in his life when his interest in natural sciences really launched and became a, um, a main part of his life. He was influenced by the work of William Vaught and the Road to Survival, which first called to his attention the issues of population um, and how that affects ecosystems. This was more so with insects and other animals besides humans at this point in his life. In 1968, Ehrlich published The Population Bomb, which claimed that there were too many people on Earth using too many resources and that this would eventually result in the destruction of humanity and the environment that we live in, and that the earth would be unlivable. Some of the solutions he proposed, including um, making, included making abortion completely legal and accessible, government intervention in population issues, having people stick to having only two kids, no more, um, even establishing a Bureau of Population Control with the federal government. And he did say if voluntary measures fail, then we should consider uh, compulsory measures to get this under control. He established two major organizations, including uh, Zero Population Growth and Millennium, the Millennium Alliance of Human and Biosphere. Zero Population Growth sought to mobilize some of the solutions he suggested for getting the population under control and protecting the environment by advocating for the legalization of abortion, um, sex education, birth control, and other measures like that. Millennium Alliance of Human and Biosphere focused more on the interconnections between the human population and how many resources that we consume, um, as opposed to just population alone, that it really examines the interworking of population, resources, and consumption. He was met with criticism from within the scientific community and from both sides of the political spectrum. Um, some folks responded to the population bomb with it was too alarmist, um, too scary, too much to think about uh, the extinction of humanity as a result of there being too many of us. Um, some folks within the scientific community said that he extrapolated too far from his data set, um, claiming that you know there was going to be an end, um, an apocalypse of some sort, even though he didn't really have uh, direct proof that that was going to happen. And some of the situations that he thought would come to pass did not come to pass. He thought that humanity might be exterminated through nuclear war, through massive famine, um, through disease, and none of those things have happened as of yet. He has changed his paradigm to focus more so on how it's not just the population of humans that's a problem, it's how many resources we consume. And so his current work focuses more so on that. He's had varied reactions from both the political right and the political left. Um, the right was obviously concerned with birth control, um, abortion, and government interference to make the changes necessary for the environment. And the left was concerned more so with how the claim that there are too many people might affect marginalized people, or people might take that in a a, you know, a scarier way and try to eliminate people. Um, some of the reason that none of the, the solutions that Ehrlich suggested have come to pass is because environmentalism was swept up in party politics or partisanship. Um, all of the solutions that Ehrlich proposed to preserve the environment and to stop the 
the population from growing further were more so liberal solutions, including the establishment of a new branch of government um, and having forced limitations on how many children people can have. He even suggested luxury taxes for things like diapers and pacifiers. He also suggested um, responsibility prizes for couples that chose not to have children. And so if you frame Ehrlich within the context of the political realignment from the late 60s to the 80s, this was obviously not received very well because Americans value individualism and they value their ability to consume. Um, a good example of the consumption aspect of it is he suggested only having one car per family. Of course, that would require the, the sacrifice of convenience and Americans were not ready to hear that, especially during the time period which Ehrlich um, came into the public eye. Um, a good way that he put this was he suggested giving up the cowboy economy in which everything that we do as Americans um, and internationally is based on producing as much as we can and consuming as much as we can. Um, he talks about if a cowboy fouls up his nest, he can just move west. That's not the case with our environment. If we destroy our planet, we've only got one. There's nowhere else for us to go. Um, Ehrlich pricked American sensibilities pretty severely with these suggestions because it would require the fourth year of those individual rights that people felt entitled to. Um, and this is why we haven't seen any of these changes come about. We haven't seen the government take enormous drastic measures to get the environment into good shape and to prevent the further destruction of our natural resources. Um, he continues to advocate for protecting the environment and conservation. Um, but he is more pessimistic that we're not going to be able to get anything done because of the societal resistance, because of the lack of government support on this. Um, his An interesting quote in an interview he conducted in May 2021 was, the solution to all of this is to drink really good wine and keep your internal environment in good shape while the external goes down the drain. So with that, I'll open it up to questions. So... Um... What what do you think was more extreme? His beliefs and his, the ideas that he had in political policy, uh, in, in accordance with environmentalism and uh, the fears of con overconsumption that would ultimately destroy the planet, or the hysterical driven narratives of bipartisan politicians and uh, conservatives and liberals uh, in, in in the wake of his of his ideas? Yeah. Um, so. From from an initial perspective, he, he suggested some extreme measures, right? However, Ehrlich is a scientist, and what he is trying to accomplish is the preservation of a species, which, of mm. course, it's going to require extreme measures. It's going to require a complete reworking of the way that we conduct our life and the way that we live our life. Um, I think that the reactions received were more extreme something interesting he initially wanted to title the book population um, resources and consumption he wanted to capture the nuance of that it was never just about population and so the reaction that oh it's about a population issue and they're just trying to limit how many babies we can have and all those things that's a more extreme reaction because it doesn't look at the whole picture it's looking at only one aspect of what he wanted to address so any other questions? Yeah. Do you do you think it would have ever worked? Like, can you think of a time within, I'd say, the 19th century or the 20th century where that philosophy of let's limit and let's limit would have worked? Like maybe back when the war was happening, when they were limiting consumption? It depends on the resource specifically. Um, if we're trying to preserve natural resources like oil and natural gas or even clean water, these measures alone would not be enough. We would have to completely change the way that we participate in capitalism and the way that we participate in global trade. Um, as far as population is concerned, that hasn't really worked because there's 4 billion more people than there were when or like published this book. And so um, China's tried to do that, but limiting the number of children people have hasn't really worked. So. But some of the other solutions were good ideas. OK, I think that brings us to a close. Stop video, OK. 
I feel like one of those. Oh, no, it's a uh, stop share. Okay. <laughs> Help. Yes. Yeah, so oh, thank the God. Mouse pads broken and then stop. At the top. <laughs>